What about the person who refuses to prostrate? Not a prostration of respect, but a prostration of worship. Not a prostration to the creation, but a prostration to the creator of the heavens and the earth. Subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla wa ala. What about this person? The prayer is a very important part of a Muslim's faith. In fact, if a person does not pray, many, many scholars of Islam have held that this person has left the fold of Islam, he's become an apostate. Indeed, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Inna al-ahda alladhi baynana wa baynahumu salah faman tarakaha faqad kafar. He mentioned the disbelievers and he said that the covenant, the distinguishing line, the covenant between us and them is the prayer. So whomsoever leaves it has disbelieved. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that uh, he, the Prophet ﷺ said that Allah has obligated five prayers. Whoever excellently performs their ablutions, their wudu, prays them in their proper times, completes their bowing, their prostrations, and khushu' and concentration, humility, and sub submissiveness to Allah. Whoever does this has a promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He will forgive him. And whoever does not do that, then He has no promise from Allah. And he may either forgive him or punish him. In fact, Allah uh, Buraida ibn Husayb, he mentioned that the Prophet ﷺ said, Do not leave an obligatory prayer intentionally, for whoever leaves it intentionally has been absolved from any protection. And we know that an Islamic state must protect all of its Muslim citizens. But here, this is showing that the person who does not pray, he has been absolved for all of this from any responsibility from the Islamic State. In fact, Buraida radiallahu anhu reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu said, whoever misses the Asr prayer deliberately, his deeds will be rendered null and void. Likewise, in a hadith that sends shivers down your spines, the Prophet sallallahu he mentioned the prayer one day, and he said, whoever guards them, he will have light, proof and safety. And whoever does not guard them will neither have light, nor proof, nor safety. And on the day of judgment, he will be with Qarun, with Pharaoh, with Ubay ibn Khalaf, and with Haman. Let's look at these four people. The person who does not guard his prayer, he will be with Pharaoh. Who is Pharaoh? Pharaoh is an enemy of Musa alayhi salam. In fact, he's the one as Allah says, He is the one who said, I am your Lord, the Most High. This person will be with Haman. Who is Haman? Pharaoh of Musa, السلام, he told Haman to build a staircase to the heavens so that he could see the God of Musa. Ubay ibn Khalaf. Who is Ubay ibn Khalaf? He is an enemy of the Prophet Muhammad. And Qarun is an enemy of Musa salam. So here you have the enemies of the Prophet. In fact, some of the worst people that have ever stepped foot on this planet. Allah's Messenger وسلم, is saying that whoever does not guard his prayer will be with these people on the Day of Judgment. He's not saying whoever doesn't pray completely. He's saying whoever doesn't guard his prayer, all of his prayers will be with this people, with these types of people on the Day of Judgment. In fact, Abdullah ibn Shaqiq, he said that the companions of the Prophet وسلم, they did not think that neglecting any deed made a person a disbeliever, an apostate, except the leaving of the prayer. And this is reported by Tirmidhi and Hakim, who classed it as authentic according to the conditions of Bukhari and Muslim. So it is true that the scholars have differed about this matter. Some scholars have said, that a person who does not pray out of negligence, he becomes a disbeliever. And other scholars have said, no, he's a sinner. And it depends on the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether Allah wants to punish him or leave him. However, they are all united. The one who, who doesn't believe in the obligation of the five prayers, then he has disbelieved and he's become an apostate. But the point here is not to discuss the difference of opinion among the scholars. The point here is to look at these hadiths and think about this. Would you want to be brother or sister? Would you like to be from among those people who are with Pharaoh on the day of judgment? May Allah protect us. 
with Haman, with Ubay ibn Khalaf, with Qarun, with these types of people.